How you guys and girls doing today? It's your boy Tim 918 I gotta make this video quick because my AC does not fucking work and I am profusely going to start sweating very shortly here. Luckily, it's in the evening time and it's a lot cooler than it was earlier. I tried to record this video earlier and I couldn't stand my car for like more than two minutes because I almost died. But um, y'all, you know, I wanted to talk about uh, your car's extended warranty. No, I'm just kidding. I wanted to talk about uh, FedEx. In this in today's video, I'm gonna turn this air on. Hold on, hold on. You know, it, it, look, look, if this shit is a little bit loud, I just gotta talk louder because, yeah, this, this, this air gotta go on. <clears throat> Even though it's busted, it still blows like kind of cold sometimes, like for like two minutes, and then it'll realize, like, oh shit, nigga, now nah, I'm broken. Like, I'm gonna blow hot air instead, and like, that's what it'll do. But what I was saying, here go this dumb bitch. What the fuck? Like, bro, you know, it's crazy too. Because I really got to start coming out here. I really got to start coming out. Because I'm just sitting in a random ass parking lot right now. I got to start coming out to these fucking parking lots, bro. At night or super early in the morning. Because it's like, whenever you sit by your... You ever peep that? Like, whenever you sit by yourself, everyone starts driving close to you. It's like... You know, that's one of my pet peeves. It's like, when you pull up to a store or some shit... Especially if you, if you introverted, you know what I'm talking about. You pull up to a store or something like that. And you can park on the other side. And I do that shit on purpose. You can park on the other side of the goddamn parking lot. And it doesn't fucking matter. Like, somebody, even though everything is vacant, everything is empty. Somebody will pull up right beside you. And park right beside you and just look at you. They'll park right beside you and look at you. And I'm just like, what the, like, bro. Like, what the fuck? Like, out of all the places to be, you decide to be right next to me? But... What else I was saying? I got distracted. Um, um, so FedEx, FedEx, right? So, to first, I've been first two or three weeks of FedEx, right? Uh, FedEx ground driver, physically demanding, right? You know what I mean? Like physically, like if you um, are afraid of like physical work, or if you're afraid of doing shit that like gonna make you sweat a lot or like strain you because you're lifting a whole bunch of stuff this wouldn't be the job for you like but other than that it's a simple job but it's not easy y'all heard that saying right simple but not easy that's what it is it's simple but it isn't easy the job is you know i got dragonflies that fly around my car too and i was wondering what was going on i think it's because my car is brown or like a darkish gray or something and they think that it's water. I looked that shit up earlier. Because whenever I park places, if there are dragonflies, they'll legit come up to my car and just like either stare at it or try to land on it. And they say that dragonflies, you know, if they, if they mistake your car, or like the coat as like a pond or something that they'll try to lay their eggs on it or some shit. Or they'll, you know, they'll fuck around. But you know what I mean? Um, I got distracted. What's was talking about? Yeah, so first two or three weeks, uh, your body's just gonna be getting used to it. Uh, like, like I said, it's a physically demanded job. You know, yep, there goes the dragonflies. It's, it's a physically demanded job. You're out there. Um, uh, you know, you're sweating. Shit, by the, before you even leave the warehouse, you're sweating. You know, you know, you know how they say the moment you clock in, you start work. That's how it is. Like the moment you you clock in, the trucks will be like loaded halfway or pretty much. I say more than halfway, uh, depending on what station you at. And uh, because like the, the scanners and like the people who pick like the pickers and stuff like they'll they'll do your shit for you. Like they'll fill the truck for you until you get there. And then you'll have to, you know, fill up the rest of the shit as they're putting the shit in your truck. You just organize it where you want. And then, you know, you decide on whether or not you, uh, you decide on whether or not you want to. Um, I mean, not decide on whether or not you just got to get the big shit because they don't pick that stuff up. You got to put it in the truck and everything. And yeah, I mean, shit. <clears throat> Typical shit, you know, you busted ass AC. AC won't work, just like my car. AC doesn't fucking work with the damn. Um, it don't even turn on. Uh, they have fans in the truck, but the fans blow hot air. So, um, and you know, especially in this in the summertime, that shit's the worst. Uh, if there's one thing that does work, though, is the heat. So in the winter, you know, you're probably warm as hell. Like I, I love the winter. I love the cold. I love winter time. I mean, you know, shit. Back in the day, you, you know, I'm not gonna even go on a, on a rant about that, but. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it's pretty good. Um, who the fuck is this person? Why the fuck do people keep, bro? It must be me. 
I think I'm paranoid. I think that's what it is. I think it's honestly me. I think I, I think I'm truly paranoid. Cause I swear, it's like why is everybody around me? You know what I mean? But no. So get out there and what I'm gonna say about it is that with FedEx is that it truly depends on the contractor that you get for real. If you get a good contractor, you'll have an amazing experience or, or a way better experience than most. Like y'all, I think I made a video two, three months ago of when I had a, um, uh, a different experience at a different contractor and that was absolute shit. Um, it was like living hell and I wanted to do it again because I knew that I could. And I was just like, you know, I didn't, I felt, I felt like I wasn't given like a good shot at it. So I, I went to a different contractor and that shit worked out. Um, this contract is way better than um, the previous job I was at. But uh, the way that the job is, man, you're just underpaid and overworked for real. For the amount of shit that you do, like if anything, for the amount of shit that you do, like go the fuck away, bro. But like, like for the amount of my bag, got distracted. For the amount of shit that you do, like, depending on your area, you could definitely make a living. You know, you can you can pay your bills and shit, and then have something to stack up and save up and everything. Especially like you know, you don't spend like a lot of money, and, and you know, you just like mainly spend money on shit you need to spend money on, like on bills and shit. Like, it's definitely you know you good, and that's why I think a lot of people stay there is because they pay a lot higher than most minimum starting jobs or like you know most uh, random jobs you can start and get in with. Um, hell, there are even some people that have years of experience in other fields that don't get paid as much as some FedEx workers get paid. Um, and so, so it, that sounds like oh shit, you getting paid good then, but for the work that you do, nah, like it's not worth it. You better off, you know. I'm not gonna say it. I got. I gotta be careful what I say. But look, when you get out there, the things that people don't tell you about in a lot of these videos is it's the little things that add up over time that would make somebody quit. Like I can see why people quit this job. Like physically demanding, yes, but I don't think that's the main. Well, at least for me, that's not the main reason why. Like if you go into it with a mentality that this is gonna be tough. And this shit's gonna be like meant like not mentally, but it's gonna be like physically tough. You'll be sweating buckets. Like I, I mean, I legit lost five or ten pounds in one day and just water weight. Of course, you gain that all back when you drink and eat. But like I weighed myself and I was like, damn, I'm dying. Like I thought that I was gonna die because like I mean, that's how much you know sweat you, you're gonna be um, using or taking out. But the the biggest thing is that you get used to is the bullshit that adds up like so you'll be out there minding your business on your route minding your business and then out of nowhere see and then who the fuck are you and then so you you be out there just minding your business on your route all of a sudden your, your truck breaks down all of a sudden customer bitching and complaining about some stupid shit like oh you didn't bring up my you didn't bring my package to my front door um you know this isn't right, and like this, they got like two aggressive ass pit bulls that rip your fucking face off. Oh, you didn't bring my package to my front door, and all this sort of bullshit. Um, you know, the fucking company trying to tell you that you gotta wear, you gotta stick to their policy and wear these uniforms, and they give you like these khaki shorts and shit. Ain't nobody trying to wear no fucking khaki shorts in the damn summertime. Um, on top of that, like for example, another big thing too is like your deploy time, right? So you get to the station and you're loading your truck and everything like that. And then what should happen is that the pickers and the people who are scanning your packages should be done at a decent time. Like, so that way when they're done, that means everyone's good to go to deploy and go to their uh, route. But lately, and maybe this is at every, a lot of stations, I don't know. And I hope UPS don't go on strike because if they do, I think they say it all the volume from UPS is gonna come over to FedEx. So that just means more extra work with no extra pay. And yeah, fuck that shit. But um, what ends up happening is that the the pickers and the scanners that scan your packages, they'll be late. So you're meant to be deploying and leaving like, you know, so you get there around 7, 7.30, some shit like that. They're meant to be done by like 
maybe probably 8, 8.30 or something at the latest. But lately, they've been getting done at like 9, sometimes 10 o'clock. So you sitting there in the warehouse and there's like, a, like they tell you that another truck is coming in late or something. And you're just sitting there waiting. And you know that every second that goes by is time that's added to your shift. Because in the way that our station works anyway, or the contractor I'm under, and, and this is a fun fact for those who don't know, the farther you are away from the station, the less packages you'll have, but the closer you are, the more you'll have. So luckily our routes aren't that heavy. Like, you know, you might have, like I do like a route that might have like 98 to 100 and fucking 20, 130 stops, some shit like that. And then have uh, 150 packages or like I might have a route that has like 70 to 80 stops. And sometimes the lowest I've had is like 45, no, like 50 stops or something or 55 stops and like 70 packages. So, I mean, that's an easy ass day. But, um, you know, the big, uh oh, there go dragonflies. God damn it. But, um, yeah, they're going to see. They think it's water. That's the problem. They see, they think, I mean, I can't show y'all the dragonfly, but like the, it's, it's legit thinking that my car is like a, a water. So it keeps on trying to tap the surface. And it's like, oh shit, nigga, this ain't no water for real. But I think it's gonna try to lay its eggs on my fucking, uh, on my, on my, on my car. And maybe if I move a little bit, it'll scare him. He's like, oh shit, nigga, this ain't this stuff anymore. You know? Even though I'm moving, he still don't, he still don't get it. He's like, what the? He's like, oh, this water moves. Like, what the fuck? But um, what I was saying is that yeah. So you get what happens is the pickers are late so they're late for like two hours and you're sitting there and you're just like bro this is gonna take all fucking day um because you know I, I still have to travel out to my route and like i said my contractor we're the farthest away from the station because we drive an hour from the station so i got a 45 to 50 minute drive to the station in my own car to get to work and then from the station all the way to my first stop of about an hour. So we sitting there, it's 10 o'clock, 10.30. We all looking around like, bro, what the fuck is going on? What the fuck is happening? We like 10.30, 10.45, all the trucks are finally unloaded. The pickers finally start walking away. That's how we know, okay, we can, we can close our trucks and leave. We don't get to our first stop at like, 11.30, you just be at your first stop by like 9.30. So you already two hours behind on top of all the extra bullshit that happens. Like I said, <clears throat> busted AC, windows be jamming, um, mirrors, like when you're driving, your mirrors, like the wind, some of them won't be like bolted correctly. So like I know I, there's one truck that like when you're driving, if you're going past like 20 or 30 miles an hour, uh, the mirrors are gonna be being pushed. So, you know, you trying to look out your mirror and like you realize that that shit is folded and every like every stop you got to go and, and hang out the window and, and pull the mirror back in place um the backup camera that's supposed to be mounted that shit will just like fall like, like if you go into a shaky road or something the mount will break because it's oldie i mean oldie it's old and rusty uh so like you know your backup camera and like most of the time what i have to do is I have to try to back up with one hand. So I got that one hand on the steering wheel and I have to hold up the backup camera with my right hand and like, look at that shit. Um, like I said, late deploy. So you're getting out late as hell. Um, truck breaking down, truck starting to fuck up. Uh, and the big, another big thing too, is like when you're not in the box truck. So, you know, everyone, if you worked at FedEx, you know what I'm talking about, but like you got different trucks. So you got like a truck that's called like a P700, 800, 900, I think it is, 1,000, 12, 14. And like, you know, the, the the bigger the number, the bigger the truck. So y'all know the standard box truck that FedEx has. It's the big ass white truck that has FedEx brown on the side, right? But there are other trucks that like, are, are vans, or like Sprinter vans, or they're like Fords or um, Chevys. They got like the truck front, uh, but then have like the box truck in the back. So the smaller joints, the good thing about them is they have working AC, working windows and everything, um, but they're way smaller. So what ends up happening a lot of the time 
is that you're sitting there and you're, uh oh, the good dragonfly again. But you know what happens is you're sitting there and you get like 70, 80, 90 stops. Like I said, it's not a lot, but the truck is cramped. Like the truck is jam packed because you have what they call ICs, which is overflow, which is just massive, big packages, packages that you shouldn't be lifting by yourself. Oh, by the way, it's another thing too. By the way, you would think that logic would say, and I'm not talking about logic, the rapper. I'm not talking about logic, the one that flowed like a faucet, the boom bat. I'm not talking about that one. But logic would tell you that if it takes two or three people to lift up a package and put it in a truck, then you should have somebody else with you and two or three people to take it out of the truck. That's what you would think. That's the, I mean, that's the logic that you would think. But no, I had to, y'all, I had to take out an entire play set. A, a play set. I'm not talking, I'm not talking just like, you're probably like, oh, Tim, you know, you're talking about just like the swings, some shit like that. Or just like, you know, or maybe you're just talking about like the, the, the sand or some shit. You, know, you ain't talking about the whole, no, no, no. An entire fucking play set. It had the swings. It had the, uh, the slide. It had the metal bars. And that shit, uh, it had the, the, the jungle gym bars, it had the poles, it had sand. That shit was 250 fucking pounds. 250 fucking pounds. 250 pounds. And I'm sitting there, I'm just like, are you shitting me? I'm, and, and the biggest dude in the station, now he's not like fat, but like, you know, he's like stocky. He's like a stocky dude. And he's probably pushing 300 something pounds, uh, but he, he's a little, a little bit tall, but like, you know, he, he's stocky dude. He couldn't even lift that shit. He tried to lift that shit. He was like, oh, shit. And like, he was like, yeah, you're going to have to pull up your truck a little bit so we can uh, team lift this and put this shit in your truck. And I pulled up the truck. Put shit. And I was just like, yo, if it takes three, or two people, technically three, because this ass is worth two. If, if it takes three, three motherfuckers to lift up this shit, why in the fuck am I trying to do this shit by myself on this damn route? They don't give a fuck, bro. You know, all, all jobs say that shit because they have to. All jobs, or oh, there's two dragonflies now, double trouble. They're gonna see. I mean, it doesn't matter if they plant eggs on my fucking car, because I mean, the shit would just be fried because of the heat. Or I'll just drive away and that shit will fly off. But god damn it. Just, they just don't understand in their insect brain. They, they can't comprehend that this is not water, this is a vehicle. But, um, um, so yeah, 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 yeah. What's I talking about? Yeah, yeah. So the truck is packed, right? So you driving in the smaller truck, not the the seven hundred, eight hundreds, a thousand. The truck is fucking packed to the fucking T, and you have no movement. What the fuck are you looking at? You have no movement. You have no. You go in the back. You open up the back door, and you cannot get to your packages. And that's what takes the most time. Like what takes the most time is like when you're at a stop. And you taking 5, 10, sometimes 15 minutes, no bullshit, to try to find one package for one stop. And you just like, what the freak, Flack? You know, like, I'm sitting here and I got like, you know, in the way that they order it, it's like numbers from like 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, 3,500, all the way to 8,000s. And I'm sitting here and I'm trying to find a 1,000 and I have to dig through all this shit just to get to the just to try to find this one fucking package because another thing with those other trucks the smaller jumps is that when you turn if you're turning over five miles an hour everything's coming off them shelves they're not good shelves or tightly packed shelves like the the big trucks so i turn at five miles an hour and everything's falling everything is fucking falling so a, a, a day that is meant to be an easy day that, that's the reason why a lot of people quit Based on what I what I what I see, a day that's meant to be like an easy day, that you know maybe you're supposed to go in at like eight o'clock and be done no later than, say, two or three, turns to turns out to be a day that you don't get off until five or six or even later. And keep in mind, you got an hour to return back to the station at least if you're far away from the station. So I'm sitting there. I'm like, yo, we could have deployed. Like this is my problem. This is my thought process. I'm like, yo. We could have fucking deployed and could have been at my first stop two hours early. I could have been at my first stop by, uh, you know, 930 and shit like that. And I could have been on my first stop already. But now I don't get to my first stop until 1130. 
and I don't get done until around four or five, right? But that actually turns into uh, six or seven, and then I still have to drive back to the station so I don't get back there until eight. And yeah, then I have to drive back home within the 45 minutes so I don't get home until 8.45, nine. I'm just like, holy shit, bro. It's like with FedEx, it's Russian roulette. Like, you never know what the fuck's gonna happen. Like, there, there's rarely a day that shit goes right. There's rarely a day. When those days happen, you're just like, holy shit, if every day was like this, if this was actually structured and organized and it was good like this, holy shit, like this would be great. If every day was like that, you'd be like, wow, a lot less people would quit and their retention rate wouldn't be so fucked up. But every day there's just some new bullshit that adds on to the bullshit on top of, of course, the job in and of itself, the whole physical thing. You can get over that real fast And if you don't You'll just throw up or die or something I don't know But like Your body eventually gets used to it But All that other extra shit man That's what that That's what kills you for real And who the fuck Like bro If y'all niggas don't But see That's the that's the thing What if that, that, That's what eventually ends up happening You know another thing I gonna need to get tinted windows I've been saying that for like a year and a half No I've been saying, I've been saying that for years I've been saying that for like Six years Every time I go out in public, I'm like, I need to get tinted windows, bro. But I have not. So if I ever watch this video back, Tim, you lazy fucker, get tinted windows, goddammit. Because these motherfuckers, man, motherfuckers looking at you and shit. But look, that's all for this video. I can go in more depth. I know I was so distracted and talking about dragonflies and shit half the time. This video is all over the fucking place. And y'all might not even be able to hear me because I got my AC running. But, um, or the busted AC. But, um, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll keep y'all updated if y'all want like bigger stories and stuff like that let me know because I, I got tons of stories I can go into detail about a whole bunch of shit how Pitbull almost ripped one of my dudes uh, faces off and that's why on that same day I went and bought this bad boy pepper spray I, br I bring this bitch everywhere with me I mean until this day I mean that same day because I was on the fence about buying pepper spray everybody told me that they got bit they were like everyone and I'm just like no one bought like no one has a knife or pepper spray anything like that they were just like nah like you know it, it is what it is and i was like nigga fuck that it's like what the fuck you mean it is what it is what you mean i'm oh i'm just gonna get bit like i'm not getting bit if i can avoid that shit what you think this is like i'm just gonna walk up and it's gonna be like a pit bull german shepherd rock wilder or some shit like that first and foremost i'm not getting out of the truck i got a lot of people you know one thing like when you when you train with people like you'll ride along in your first week and you'll ride along with people and shit. And some of the people I ride along with, like some of them, like they got common sense, like like they niggas, right? like so, so they got common sense. Like we see a dog and we don't know, and that dog isn't like showing obvious signs of happiness. Like, oh shit, like, you know, tail wagging and tongue out and shit. Even then you can't really trust a dog like that. But if it's not showing obvious signs of happiness or some shit like that, he like the dude I'm right, he's like, nah, nigga, fuck that, we're not getting out. Cause obviously that dog don't look like it's gonna have a happy, jolly Christian time. Um, and you know, but some people I'd be riding with, bro, they be dumb. <laughs> like he was just like one time, homie was just like, "Hey, going ahead." Uh, he said, "It's okay." He said, "Sometimes you just gotta test it out, man." I was like, "What you mean, fucking test it out?" He said, "Yeah, going ahead and open up the door." He said, "Put your hand out and see if the dog comes up to your hand and sniffs it. And if the dog comes up to your hand and sniffs it, you know he's cool. But if he like..." jolts towards you and jumps at you or runs towards the truck when you open it up and stick your hand out you know he's not friendly and i was just like yo i'm not doing that shit what the fuck i look like i'm you think i'm gonna risk my hand y'all niggas see that shit that happened uh, like two or three weeks ago fucking amazon uh lady uh younger black girl she got her her goddamn uh her, her car to go deliver a package and got her fucking ring finger bit the fuck off by a pit bull or some shit trying to deliver a package and lost the finger Hey, you got me fucked up. You think I'm gonna lose a finger on this fucking this fucking job? Fuck no. And I was sitting there, I was just like, okay. So, you know, one time we pull up to a house, I open up the door, and he's just like, hey man, see, I was like, is that dog friendly? He was just like, uh, I'm not so sure, man. He said, go ahead, open up the door real quick, stick your hand out and see. And I was like, are you sure, bro? He was just like, yeah, yeah, go ahead, do that. Now, keep in mind, the dog's at the garage, and we're in a truck, so he, the dog is not close enough yet. So I opened up the door, and he's barking. I mean, barking, foaming at the mouth. So I could tell he was already not like the friendly type, 
but I stick my hand out the window, I mean, I mean my, uh, the door a little bit, the dog starts darting towards my hand. I close the door immediately. I look at the dude I'm riding along with, and I literally say, you got me fucked up. I said, you bugging. That's what I said. I said, you fucking bugging. You tripping. If you think I'm going to do that shit, what the fuck are you on? I was like, huh? And he, and he was just like, well, man, sometimes you just got to risk it, man. You know, the package has to be delivered. You know, you just can't. I was like, I don't give a fuck. Fuck the package. And the FedEx tell me I got to fuck FedEx. Like, nigga, fuck all. Like, what? Like, I'm not doing that shit. What happened to the whole safety thing? They, 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 they preach that shit, right? Safety is our number one priority for our drivers. Like, okay, well, I don't feel so safe with this dog out. And like, if it's, a, if it's a little giant, like, it's like a little chihuahua, like an ankle biter, they can still fuck you up, especially if they in packs now. But, like, if it's something like that, I might get out. Because, I mean, if anything, if that bitch is aggressive, I can just kick that motherfucker. But I still don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to use my... I don't want to kick a dog, stab a dog, use pepper spray or something like that if I don't have to, right? And, and most of the time, I'll bring doggy treats. I'll bring, like, those milk bones and shit, you know what I mean? And, um, and, and, and like, I'll see if I can turn an enemy into a friend real quick. Some of them, like, they'll be barking, and then I throw the treat, and they'll grab it, and go right back to barking. Or they'll grab it, and then they'll just look, like, they'll, they'll, they'll be side-eyeing me as, like, I'm trying to get out. I'm like, okay, nah. He, he, he pretended like he want that treat, but the moment I get out, he's going to come and tear my ass up. Um, or, like, sometimes it'll, it'll, it will turn them friendly. Like, you know, so I've had dogs I throw a treat to, and they're barking like they want to rip my uh, my neck out, and then I throw them a treat, and they're cool now, right? And now, now they expect it. And I have, like, a black German Shepherd that looks terrifying as fuck. It's like at this business I go to, he tear like he look like it's just all black, like just straight up nigga. I'm talking darkness. I'm talking African. I'm out of Rasu flames and Tachi style Naruto Shibiden. Like he's dark like that, and he's got like these uh like these yellow eyes. You would think he's a demon if you had the lights turned off. Um, and this motherfucker, uh oh, they go to Dragonfly again. God damn it. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna start driving. Yeah, I'm gonna start driving. Yeah, cause I can't. It's going to try to place eggs on my shit. And I can't have that, buddy. Um, yeah, it's still here, too. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, I can't. Oh, no. Hold on, y'all. Oh, shit. I fucked up. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, damn. I don't fuck the camera. I know y'all y'all probably can't hear me right now. I don't know if y'all can hear me. Oh shit. God damn it, bro. Okay. Well shit, I gotta hold my phone at this point. Cause I can't uh the dragonfly is still trying to follow my uh my car right now. I'm driving, that bitch still trying to follow me. But yeah, yeah, so what I was saying though. Is that um, I pull up, okay, I pull up, like I pull up, and uh, yeah, like I open up the door, put my hand out, dog runs towards me, I'm just like, yeah, you must be fucking bugging, you must be tripping, I look straight at him, he's just like, oh man, you gotta risk it, and I was like, nigga, I'm not risking nothing, you, you, you must be bugging, what kind of shit you think this is, I was like, the only reason, I told him, I said, the only reason I'm even doing this shit right now is because you're here. Like, when I'm by myself, I'm not doing this shit. I'm not wasting my time debating whether or not I'm going to risk getting attacked for someone's package. If you don't have enough common sense to put your fucking dog away when I'm trying to deliver your shit, and you know that your dog could be potentially aggressive, then that's your problem, not mine. What I'm going to do, if I feel like delivering it in the first place, is I'm just going to toss that bitch out on the ground, and then I'm going to scan it, and then uh, scan it first, and then toss it out on the ground. And then what ends up happening nine times out of ten is that... Um, you know, the, the shit will tell you that, like, you're, you're not at the location or it'll ask you, you know, where you want to scan the shit at. And I'll say that I, I placed it at other. And that's what I normally do. Hold on. Right. But yeah, yeah, what I was saying, what I was saying was 
the the dragonflies are still trying to follow my shit, bro. I'm at a stoplight, and these motherfuckers are still here. My car, I mean, is water brown? I mean, water can be brown sometimes. What happens if they're just racist fucking dragonflies and shit? What happens if they're just like, it's not even the, the brown cars, it's the brown person in it. What happens if they're like, oh, that's a fucking black guy in that car. Let's follow him. Where does he have to? What happens if, like, what happens if some animals are just like, like that? And you, you would just never know because we can't like read their mind or some shit. So they you know, fucking up. They're just like, oh, look at that coon. Let's follow him. Where is he going? What's his license plate number? God damn it. He shouldn't be able to walk free in this country. Yeah. Let's, 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 let's chill in this car. Let's do that. I don't know. But, um, yeah, yeah. What I was saying was, God damn it. These fucking people. What I was saying was, I got to turn this AC on. This busted ass AC. What I was saying was, is that, so, I, I was like, I scan the package, throw that bitch out on the ground. Uh, type on the thing I type other slash dog and then that's it look, look at me I'm sweating uh, I look like a fucking rotisserie chicken don't I I know I know I know what you want y'all want to say in the comments you rotisserie chicken nigga that's what you look like but I'm just like bro I'm not doing that shit but yeah that's the end of this video it's been really random Um, I know it's been all over the place and shit but uh that, that's like that was my first week and a half or two weeks of FedEx I didn't really get go into like an actual story in depth but I just talked about like the, the reason people quit and shit but if y'all want stories let me know because I can I can go into detail like I've got like I said I got way more dog stories I've got uh, stories about how I rolled up and saw a dog with some pigs um, pig, just loose pigs I saw uh, goats loose goats and shit like that goats and chickens and everything um, I've got like stories of motherfuckers who uh, you know, fucking old people who like fell over and shit. Uh, see some crazy ass shit, bro. See some crazy shit. Like one of the people I was with gave a milk bone to one dog, and and the other there was like two dogs. He gave a milk bone to one, and then gave the milk bone to the other, and then one of them ate the milk bone. The other jank tried to kill the other one just because he wanted his milk bone. I've seen some crazy shit, bro. I've seen some wild shit. And I got so many stories for y'all. So just let me know what y'all want to see. And I will let y'all know. But I will catch y'all in the next episode of Nigga Ball Z. I'm sweating profusely.